It is a brand new episode of Flyers Daily for Monday, October 28th. Flyers Daily is always presented by Ticketmaster. Make more memories live. To discuss uh, the week that was uh, game action and off the ice as well, and uh, what lies ahead in the next week, uh, we join now every Monday from PhiladelphiaFlyers.com, NHL.com, and HockeyBuzz.com. It is Bill Meltzer. Bill, it's been a busy week on and off the ice. Um, And let's actually start off the ice because Jet Lachenko sent back to Guelph. um, And uh, I, I think, I, I haven't seen a lot of dissension on the decision, um, even on social media. It no. just seems like that, that was probably the best thing to do, especially when you couple that with the start the team got off to. Yeah. Um, I, I, on the positive side, I mean, he, he held his own for the most part. Uh, had, a, had a good camp. Nobody was expecting him to, to make the team. Himself um, included, by the way. He brought yeah, ten days worth yeah, of clothes. Only, you know, only had ten days worth of clothes. Yeah. Figured he'd be heading heading back to the Ontario League. Um, you know, I, I I think it did get to a little bit of a point um, before he sat those two games. Went back where I thought he was starting to press just a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Just, just a little bit. Um, so still holding his own, but but you you could see that he he wanted to kind of you know make things happen, right? And and rather than uh, but I don't, I don't, you know, which kind of a lot of guys go through that. I, I don't think he was like outright struggling or anything. But I, but, but I, 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 I do think that guys who are really, again, really anybody, but guys who are used to being offensive players. I mean, Jed had the two points in the the first game of the preseason. Didn't have another one in the preseason. Didn't have one in the regular season. And and, and you could see that he. You know, just, just to take a little, a little bit. Of, started, starting to put, I think, a little bit of weight in his shoulders. But, but he's a very mature kid. The, his, his hockey sense. Actually, I asked Danny Breer this: that you, you know his speed, you know his playmaking ability, and you know his hockey sense. And these, are, these are all things that that are really exciting that he can build off of. You know, what are what are the things that he can work on over the rest of the season, over the next off season, um, to potentially you know, make the team next year. And and part of it is just the natural evolution, getting a little bigger, a little stronger, um, having a good off season, certainly, you know, um, he's, he's deceptively strong for, especially for yeah. a young and not, not the biggest kid, but I mean, but you could, you know, I, I, I think that he'll, he'll only get bigger and stronger and better has to work on his shot. Has the, has the playmaking ability, but well, maybe developing a little bit more of a shooting mentality. I mean, I, there's there's a very very high upside with Jet Luchenko, and um, I think Danny Briere said he said, "Listen, we we don't want a fourth line player. We we want a, a top six kind of a player, center with speed, yeah. <laughs> all yeah. situations, yeah, yeah." And and, and I mean, so you know, there, there's a lot to be excited about there. Um, you know, John Tortorella said. That at least to him, not playing him was not really about how he was playing. It was more about the team, and yeah. didn't want to have have an eighteen year old in the middle of that putting pressure on himself as like a you know to lead him out. Yeah, he, he yeah. wasn't going to get them out of it, right? Yeah. So, um, whereas Danny said, well, it wasn't necessarily where the team was. It was really it's really more about for the long term development of the player. Um, so uh, I expect that, that when he goes back, um, you often see those first couple of weeks. Dan, Danny referred to that. Uh, I remember it happened with Braden Shen. Yeah, uh, let down. He went, he went, uh, when he started with L.A. And, yeah. and he went back. And it really took Braden a good month to get, get back to himself. Yep. Because you just it, – it does. It, it's a letdown, right? You're, you're in the It's NHL. almost a different sport, Bill, <laughs> at that point when you're playing the NHL versus the it, OHL. It is. You yeah. have guys that, that have lit up juniors and they come to the NHL. There's so much you can get away with there. Yeah. That you cannot get away with in the NHL. So Sometimes um, that can feel almost too easy. But I, I think one of the most important elements of what Jet Lachenko just went through is knowing what it feels like to play in the NHL. Yeah, and it, I mean, I think he's a pretty serious guy. Obviously, very mature for his age, but I think he's even just a serious guy. Period. End of sentence. And I think that he'll take that knowledge of what he just went through um, when he has a chance to really sit down and think about it and package it and figure out how he can take that experience and really benefit from it. 
I mean, this is a kid at 13 that didn't just hunker down on video right. games when the pandemic hit. He yeah. built a gym. This is dad to build a gym and got to work. So uh, I, I think he'll do right with what he just went through, the experience that he just had that uh, I guarantee he wasn't expecting. Maybe he thought he'd get a game, the rookie games, and maybe a game, and, that, and then back to Guelph we go. Um, but I, I guarantee he wasn't packing sweaters and hoodies when he came in for training camp. So um, it, real good camp for him, and uh, I'm excited about his future and I think this was the right decision. Um, let's let's stay off the ice for a second, Bill, because this kind of comes on the ice as well. Were you surprised that the the recall of uh, Alexei Kolosov uh, becomes the first Belarusian uh, goaltender in the NHL in NHL history? Oddly enough, yeah, there just hasn't been a whole lot of Belarusian players uh, in the NHL, which shocked me a little bit. But were you surprised that the recall ends start on Sunday? Well, one once. Uh... The once the recall came, I knew he wasn't being called yeah. to, to sit and you know, be the third goalie of practice, or even even be yeah. you know um, thrust into a game in a situation where you're already down by several goals and you're you're putting him out there. So once he was called up, I, I, I figured he would be starting. Um, he's done all, he you know, he's done all right with with the Phantoms. A, a little bit, it's a little bit deceptive, like like one game. Um, be, he allowed four in the first period, but didn't allow another one the rest of the game, which is one yeah. of the things you look for. Uh, you know, okay, if it's not going his way, how's how's he settle in? Um, I, I it doesn't shock me just just because the uh, the goaltending in general just has not been up to par. Uh, Ivan Fedotov has really kind of struggled. In camp and in regular season so far, his most recent started. It was better than the other ones, but it still wasn't okay. He's he's locked in now or anything. It, it was just better. Um, he lacks style so, points too, Bill. Because when it, when it, yeah, when yeah. he gets, it doesn't look good. No, no, and and uh, every save. But listen, I mean. Roman Chikmanik made every save look much harder than it had to, right? And, yeah. and yet, and yet he, uh, you know, and he came over from playing his whole career in Europe, but he was a Vezina finalist the first year. So, yeah. uh, you know, so you know, I, it doesn't always have to look pretty. You just have to stop the puck. It's to be but, effective. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, but I mean, Fedotov has really been struggling, and yeah, immediately what jumps up with Kolosov is how agile he is side to side. He moves post to post really well. Um, there's still a lot of adjustments there are to make too, though. Um, an example being Cole Caulfield's goal coming off the post there. Uh, yeah. goes off his hip into the short side. Uh, you know, one one bad goal in a game can kind of change the whole complexion to how the goalie performed. I, I, th- I thought for the most part, Kolosov did just fine. Um, but that 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 one particular that hurt that hurt because it, it went from all of a sudden all of a sudden you're looking at a two to one deficit which is manageable to three to one. Yeah. Um, that that's pretty tough road with the way things have been going. Um, so for I think you're in another look. Uh, the next time you're in, you know the next time you're in a situation where you need to rotate the goalies a little bit. Um, Fedotov's on the out of the running. I mean, right now they're carrying three. I, I don't love carrying three goalies. I know you don't love carrying three goalies. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, with with York out, there is a roster spot. So see how how he does at practice. Kind kind of roll from there. You know the the goaltending. If you look where the Flyers have been, they're, they're the bottom of the league in, in goaltending yeah. so far. So you know you, you're there's opportunities there. So. His first test was for a first game in the NHL. Um, certainly seen goalies who've had gone into good careers have much worse first game. So yeah, it, it, the it, save it, on the two on O bill was outrageous. Yeah, that, that was outrageous. In fact, yeah. when I first saw it, there's there's no way he say that it had to hit the post, but it, it was, yeah, you know, yeah, that, that was um, that was unbelievable. His game just seems kind of built for the NHL East West game. Yeah. I, I really like the way he looked around screens too and track pucks. And even on the first goal, I thought he, you know, he looked around the screen, made a really good first save. Yeah. And I thought just Nick Sealer got a little bit too high um, for, you know, him to be. It, it, you can't have that two guys down around your goaltender and one guy when it's not on a power play for the opposition. Like, yeah, that, 
it, it's sure. too loose. Um, sure. and, you, and, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. And then you also have forwards were kind of bunched together. All, you know, yeah. The support seems too much there. of this, Bill. It, it, I need you to explain a couple things to me. Number one, this team right now to me looks like a team that's full of new faces with a new coaching staff and a new system. Uh, they they look they they lack cohesion, especially yeah. going up the ice. And for a team, I mean, really, there's only one new face. It's Matvey Mishkov, and they're playing essentially the same system. And I refuse to believe that this is just other teams uh, knowing what they're trying to do because it doesn't just look like that to me. Um, they look out of sorts, frankly. They, they, yeah, and I, and I cannot put my finger exactly on why for the reasons you just stated. They they don't move up the ice as five-man units. Um if I almost have found it hard at times to, to say it's this player, it's this player, it's this player. I agree. It's, it's been so collective that it's really hard to, to say it's certain players. I mean, there, there are guys they need to get going. That That's, that's you know, uh, Faraby, Forrester, Forrester Roth, yeah. Tippett. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that group of players, they they you have to get them all. Well, and, and on the back end, Drysdale. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Drysdale to me is really struggling right now too. Yeah, early in the year I thought it was paling, but he's got it going a little. He's really moving his legs a little he, bit he, lately, and it's helping him. Yeah, yeah, and 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 he and he does. He, he's look really from the Seattle game onward. Uh, yeah, you know, I think I think Paling's game has come around. Obviously, obviously Lawton uh, yeah. had the, the game in Seattle, but but you need but you need the guys the, that I just said the the Farabies, the Forcers, the Frosts. You know, yeah. those those are the guys that really have to hit another level this year. I guess I guess the good thing is it's still early, right? It's still early, so it's early till it's not. It, well, but that's just <laughs> it. Right? Yeah. It gets early later on here when when you're starting out. <laughs> yeah, right? as, as they say, right? So you know, listen, uh, coming into the game, I, I think I said to you, there's a hell of a difference between three five and one, right, and two six and one. Yeah, you, you're in a stretch now where you, you're gonna have to get hot just to get the hockey 500. It's, yeah, you know, it, it, yeah, I mean, this is exactly what the Flyers need to avoid. And come at least coming into last night's game, you know, you, you break it all down, and the power play had been good, the penalty kill had been good. Um, if five one five has even been average, and the goal tank even been average, they would have been in a better spot. But the, yeah. but it's you know, but, but there's too many stretches of games. Even, even in even in Saturday's game, you go into the third period with six shots on goal. I mean, that's yeah. You know, they happen to get two of them early, but they they actually went from Nick Sealer's goal the final 16 minutes of the first period and the first five of the second with no 36 shots. 09. 36 09 between yeah. shots, Bill. I mean, uh, I mean, that, they've that, had four periods where they've had three shots or less already this year. Yeah. We're not even ten games it, in. It, it, it's unacceptable, you know, where you can start with the breakouts, right? And and many times yeah. I think the forwards are out too high. So yep. it, it's very hard to make a breakout pass to them. If there is a guy open, a lot of times it's going off target and going for an icing or or you you get it, it's in a skate, it's something, and you don't you're not generating any speed through the neutral zone. So they're not they're not getting clean entries off the rush. And they're not getting the F one in fast enough to forecheck. You get it in deep, and it goes. Yep. It's one and done. It, There's no out. pace to it. No pace and, to it at all. Yeah, it's and, a stuttered and, exit through a stuttered neutral zone, and you can't yeah. get it on the forecheck when that happens. There's it, no flow to it. No, no, there's, there's no flow to it whatsoever. And, and it looks ugly, frankly. It it does. It, it, you, know, you you expect a little bit of that in the first game or two of the season. They've they yeah. played enough. They played enough now that this should not be. It should not be the case. Uh, or you go, okay, well, they kept changing time zones. You, you can make any one of the excuses you want to make. Yeah, we're um, beyond that now. No, the, we're, we're past that. It, it, what, what's been going on has been unacceptable. That, uh, you know, the, there, there is there's no cohesion. That's what they're communicating with one another. Yeah. Um, uh, you'll And sometimes you'll see a nice initial play, and there'll be nowhere to go with the puck. Right, no, no one is open, um, you know. Or, or you have the case uh, saw it a couple times actually in the Montreal game where you, you'll 
see if you'll make a nice initial play, you'll beat a guy off the rush, and then you'll try to beat the same guy a second time. And then, you know, which is, that does not work in the NHL either. No, the recoil just, just never works. Yeah. Well, once you win that initial, you know, you, you have to make a play there because yeah. you know, other, otherwise the play is as good as dead. Yeah. So. If I had told you, Bill, um, the PK would be doing what it's doing. They've given up one five on four. Well, now I guess two five on four yeah. goals yeah. after Cole Caulfield scored on that short side goal on Kolosov, Um that the PK would be what it's doing. The power play would be as good as it's been so far this year, clicking in essentially twice of what it's done in the last three years. Yeah. And they would be minus, uh, what is it, uh, th- minus 13 in second period goal differential, which, yeah. by the way, last year was their best goal differential period because it was even. They scored 83 goals last year. They gave up 83 goals yeah. in second periods last year. This year they are getting pantsed in the second period. Yeah, and, and and closely bunched together goals too. Oh, where, yeah. Where you know, where all of a sudden you go from tied, now you're down two. You're down yep. by one, now you're down by three. Yep. You know, and and just, you're up uh, two, then all of a sudden you're down five two in Seattle, right? Yeah, I, I, it's the, that old salt about uh, the the shift after you score or allow a goal is critical, and they're they're just giving up too many too easily too quickly. Yeah. yeah. It's it's astounding, and then like the Montreal game, you know, you get down four to one, and then they battle back to get within a goal, um, but it's too little, too late. And you, when you dig the hole to the four number, when that you, when you get them, it, I always say it's a race to four league. Yeah. When you get to that number, you're just digging the hole too deep. Um, let's talk about a positive though. Um, and Travis Sanheim uh, had had a three point game. He, he has been a big positive, and he's without his partner, Cam York, and I thought Ristolainen really played well on Saturday as well. Um, and, and then you look at, obviously, the performances of Sean Couturier, Travis Konechny, and Matt Vimichkov on Saturday. Um, they were pretty special. Uh, but let's stick to Sandheim real quick. What do you see different about his game, Bill? I just see a guy that is not afraid to try and make something happen. It's just the determination. It's, it seems like a more determined player that wants to take more of the onus on himself, which is leadership, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I remember la- remember last year uh, up until, I think it was either November 3rd, December 1st, but he was he was like one like one in second of time on ice per game off of the league lead. Yeah. And, and I think maybe— Dowdy was the only guy that had him, I think. Yeah. And it was, it was by a second or two of ice time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I think Travis is maybe a little bit overplayed early in the season. Right, right now you have to. Right now he, he has to eat a ton of minutes, but he, he's just playing with so much confidence. Um, either, either when it comes to jumping into plays up ice, getting pucks on the net, um, playing really well defensively, quick stick, reading off his partner, re, re, reading plays you know really well. I, I mean, I hope I hope it continues. I, I hope yeah. he can carry that through for the law. We've seen stretches of really good play from Travis, even even really half a season last year, um, where where he played at a very high level. But the way he's played recently, I think it's been a level even beyond that. I agree. Um, so that 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 definitely has been a positive, and and it's been been crucial too because you didn't have Nick Sealer at the beginning of the season. Yeah. You know, now he's without York for a while here. So, I mean, it's absolutely imperative that he actually take and carry the load a little bit. Um, I mean, I remember when Travis was a young player, he's one of those guys who would get a little down on himself. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it would be fine. It would be fine until there was a mistake. And yep. then it might snowball a little bit on, on, on Travis sometimes. I, I think now he he has the 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 pro experience and the know-how to, if there is a mistake, he puts it behind them. Yeah, ride and, the wave, and, and and ride the wave a little bit, and and he's he's been, I mean he's he's always been a big guy who can skate. That that that's yeah. always that that that's the the gold standard in the league. The big guy who can also skate. Um, I mean Travis has been been really using his feet well, really um, closing gaps too. I I think I think is I think the Flyers have been a little bit better defensively lately. And I think Travis has been an important part of that. Um, as long as long as he's getting help behind him, you know, some forwards back checking. I, I I don't worry. I don't worry about when, when they've been on the when he's been on the ice. What 
whether it's been with Cam York or, or now with Bristol Line, and that, uh, you know, that something's just going to immediately kind of go haywire. He's, he's going to read the play wrong, go to the wrong spot, whatever the, whatever the case might be. Um, you know, you're not, you're not getting that from him. I, I think you need the rest of the blue line to catch up a little bit. Um, yeah. I, I think the right decision was made, for example, taking Igor Zamula out of the lineup. I, I think that he needed to set a game. Me too. Um, so, but that, that, that definitely has been a positive. And, and as you alluded to before, certainly the, uh, the, the top line now with, uh, the the with connecting and with Michkov both in their off wings, uh, which is there's a little bit of a sacrifice for connecting. He doesn't he, he doesn't love playing on the left side, but but it's worked really well so far. And that that game on Saturday, I mean that that I, I unreal. Every everybody everybody in that room was just so thrilled for Sean Couture. And, and, and I I will add this too that uh, the concept that that uh, Couture cannot still be an effective center in the NHL, that he needs the ice shortened for him. I think he answered that. I, I, I think he, he can still play pr- at a pretty high level. So. Yeah, I thought I actually thought in the Montreal game he was really good defending too yeah. and, and some dynamic players, uh, in particular in the neutral zone and the D zone. I thought he killed plays. Um, the, the, the talk of his demise is greatly exaggerated. Yes, um, it, what a performance that was. And I, I said on the radio broadcast that uh, Sean Couturier is a guy that – it couldn't be less impressed with himself, but I think he was impressed with his, himself in that game, yeah. uh, the five-pointer. Um, that is the second five-point game uh, in the NHL. He had one in 2018 against the Penguins, which he and then, quickly and now, reminded me yeah. of. Yeah. Uh, actually, when, when I just did today's preview, or mm-hmm. really yesterday's preview at this point, um, I, I picked what I thought were the three best performances of his career. Obviously, Saturday was one. That game against that game against Pittsburgh, just just real fast. If you remember, he'd had the collision with Radko Guda, so he's playing yep. on a sprained MCL and he's hobbling on one leg basically. In, in game, game five, he scored the winning goal about a minute and a half or a minute and fifteen seconds uh, left to go in that game. So to force a game six, and then he has a hat trick and two assists. That 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 was an unbelievable performance. Yeah, and basically on one leg. And then you go back to his rookie year. Where, where he shut down Evgeny Malkin and had a hat trick in game two of that series. Yep. Um, this to me on Saturday that that was right up with with those two performances and and the timeliness of it too because the Flyers so desperately needed something like that. So that that was fantastic to see. Yeah, it was it was an unbelievable performance. I didn't know if we'd ever see that again from him, and yeah. it was awesome to see. And um, like you, I, I was thrilled for. Um, and I know that locker room was just beaming because they were so happy. Uh, at what he did, he was incredible in that game. Well, it's a it's an important week for the Flyers, and it's not an easy one. Tuesday against Boston, mm-hmm. Thursday against the Blues, Saturday against Boston. So, Bill, they're gonna have to try and eat this week. But uh, check out Bill's work uh, coming up throughout this week, and as always at PhiladelphiaFlyers.com, NHL.com, and HockeyBuzz.com. And we will talk to you tomorrow. We'll preview the Flyers and the Bruins as they'll be at TD Garden coming up uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you next time on a brand-new Flyers Daily.